Wherever have you come from? No, it's stuffed. So it's not real for now? I can see that. Any choice is right as long as it's willed. That's the truth of the matter. I know what to do. Those who favor hard logic and direct action are bound to be misguided. Only a miracle can set us free without us having to destroy something. Your gentle hands are used to killing, not giving life. You will inevitably do harm. As for Brainy, he has no regard for casualties at all. Don't you go all bossy on me, clever clogs. The truth is my shepherd. Whatever happens, I will find answers, and justice will be restored. I will perform the operation. Medica Morbo at Hibe. Only the heart will show you the right choice. Stop thinking about yourselves. Think of the sick. He's in pain. I can't see it yet, but I can feel it. It's not even a trap. It's a grave. Subipsum funisumus. Can't say I hold a soft spot for it. Stuffed or not, it's breathing. I can hear it. No. We won't ever get along. I suggest we be on our way. The sooner the better. Off we go then? Let's go. The clock is ticking. So, the one at the left, you can only pick these two until we finish the game once. So, let's start with the bachelor. He seems like the normal starting character. Daniel Dankowski, a Bachelor of Medicine, was brought here by circumstances most unfortunate. Dankowski's life work, his theory challenging the existing notions of human mortality, is being harshly persecuted by the powers that be. Suddenly, a letter arrives from a colleague suggesting that there is previous undiscovered evidence which may support Dankowski's claims. There is a settlement, the letter says, ruled by an extraordinary man who may well be seen as objective proof of Dankowski's daring hypothesis. Grasping at straws of hope, Dankowski decides to follow what he believes to be the sign of divine providence. Without further ado, he sets off for the settlement. Late at night, Bachelor arrives in the town. As he seeks room and board, he gets to know a girl called Eva Yan and stays at her place till dawn. Quest log. You're full of hate.
Okay, let's see. So, as I understand, we ourselves, the bachelor, the truly unrequishable foe. So, we try to find a way to surpass death or something like that. And we are here because there's a person in this town that is very old. We can actually crouch with shift, that's nice. Got some drugs. So, our colleague Isidur Burak wrote us a letter about this Simon Kane. And this older than should normally be possible for the past. And he already talked to him or talked him into helping us. Or talking with us, I should say. Butterflies. So let's go downstairs then, I guess. Hello, someone there? Right. This painting looks like, f like an anime scene or something. So, who are you? I had a feeling you would come. So, a Maria also wants to see us and we have to talk to Georgie before we can talk to the older brother that is the subject. So, the map right here says we encountered Eva, the girl we just talked to accidentally and she offered us to stay here. So. Let's go talk to the guy. Also, Eva told us she heard unsettling noises from the backyard, Don't so we have to. Don't you think my colors have faded? No, it's all right. Look just fine. Um, nothing. To I've do. seen the angel of yeah, it's death all right. by the window. Let me, let me talk, please. Um. So, sadly, there wasn't any more loot in here. Let's go outside. So this part I already know, but not much more. Oh, he was. The has to be prepared before he goes on stage. Time goes by and it doesn't matter where we are or what we do, the game moves on, even without us interacting with anything. And it seems like there are main, main people and NPCs, common folk. I mean, technically they are all NPCs, but you know what I mean. So we need to watch out for our reputation as well. It affects how people treat us, how many enemies we see, how much we have to pay at merchants and our dreams apparently. And the guy we're talking to right now apparently can't see anything in his mask. <laughs> Great. Also there is hunger, thirst and fatigue. Also apparently the price of items varies from shop to shop so that's interesting, I like that. 
Okay, so now before we search for Simon, the guy that lives long apparently, let's see what's in the backyard. Also, let me preach the setting. I really like the visuals of this game. There's a bit of a stalker feeling. Hello, someone there. However brilliant an action, it should not be esteemed great unless the result of a great motive. Okay. I have a heartache. So this is the younger brother and apparently the guy we should have spoken to died or was murdered but the family wants to help us. So he told us to follow talk to the other brother. There are three of them and there were three before the first one died. So well, let's speak to the daughter of the brothers first. She wants to talk to us. She should be over in this mansion. What are these paintings everywhere? At the inside. Looks very similar. All over the place. Great souls are not those who have fewer passions and more virtues than the common, but those only who have greater designs. So, sh seashore. Seashells on the seashores or something. She saw us in a dream. So, she told us. That these people you can see over here are bound to our fate. She's in this as well. And we need to save them. And we will hold the keys to my victory in their hands. Okay. Anything else? Did you see anything weird on your way here? Count, so they are these people called the bound ones or something and these are like the important people I know that the time is going on while I walk so I can't explore as much as I maybe would like to it's just I don't know if I want to go inside there <laughs> let's be honest I don't Let's, let's just go in there. Okay, or... Right. Nothing's happening. How put I back my... Well, not weapons, but my fists. Can I... What's inside? Over here. This again reminds me a bit of Stalker. Clear Sky, no, Prepared. Call of Prepared was the third game, right? Where you, right at the start, get into the ship, shipwreck. And the trader there looks a bit like him. Also follows me with his eyes. So he's a trader, I guess. 
so he said something about three rules that are important in the town these voices are the ruling families the co-owners of the boil project who have been ruling the town for almost two centuries each one of the truths they represent is screaming at the top of its lungs and in doing so travesties whatever value it carries the Zaburovs, the Olgimskis and the Kains, which the three brothers are part of and the girl we just talked to and he says we shouldn't trust any one of the three clans Furthermore, each of us will try to find a thorough, ungainly picture of the other two. Most likely, we will fill you in on the negative sides of each other faction and withhold anything that is good about them. That is, in a way, we will avoid None of us will stoop to outright slander. Stop for a minute. George has told us everything that will be said will most likely be true, but it is true for everyone's side that he completely disagrees with everything we say and take it into account. Take it as. But again, this is the brother we already talked to. We need to talk to the other brother. The other brother. It's easy to get lost in here, I guess. Was it the... Yeah, it was the, the one we already talked to, right? Yeah. Alright, this is the last one. There he is. What, what was the set movement right there? <laughs> you look possessed or something. My dear friend. And what is this? Ah, it's a, it's a body, right? And this is the head, right? Right. Okay. Yes? And the famous Dr. Dankowski, your arrival is a great honor for us. Victor Kane at your service. Okay. Dani Dankowski at yours. The people you meet here may seem eccentric, naive, or even somewhat deranged. Your head movement is. Proving that, yeah. So, I forgot to mention before, Isidore, our colleague, that sent us the letter about the letter that, in the first place, got us in this town about the old, oldest brother. And this colleague actually talked to the oldest brother in this town. The oldest brother actually talked to our colleague the day before he was found dead. So, that's that. The servant, the servants discovered him in the morning. The room had been ransacked, everything that was breaking had been broken. His disfigured, contorted body bore signs of terrible suffering. His leg was twisted, his spine broken. I think. No one has touched the body. That is currently inside the focus and will remain there for the prescribed amount of time. So what is the focus? It's hard to explain. This is study, if you will. It's an extraordinarily spacious creative laboratory. Almost perfectly sealed off. Except for the door that was visible at all times. Metaphorically speaking. It's like an equation or a mirror puzzle. Anyway, murder could not have been hiding there. Take a word for it. So now we got the place of this Isidor figure, our colleague. What is... what? Right. So I need to remember hell froze over when it's dark by the 12th warehouse. Wait, what, what exactly are you? Just a point, okay. about a transparent cat at the 12th warehouse that we could meet in the dark. Let's go for our colleague first.
Okay, my friend. So we are at the house of our colleague, but I don't find a way into it. We turn right, now we should be able to get to the front door. Right. That's what's going on over here. A foul murder occurred here last uh, this night. No unauthorized access allowed. Inspecting the crime scene is strictly forbidden until further notice. There was dust on the floor, for the deceased had been a renowned stepwalker. The dust was all covered in hoof steps and like traces of sharp bone, I guess. As if someone was using a walking stick around there. I'm telling you, it's her. The Shabnak Adir. The Clay Man Eater. Sounds friendly. Oh, that's big building. We've been assigned to this post by Alexander, the head of the Zabuhov family. His house is in decline right now, but it's still powerful and very much respected. Kindly address the concerns to him. As for me, I'm not authorized to let you in. Alright, there we have to go. So let's do that. So, let's go then to Alexander, the head of the Zabuhov family. Well, maybe after we have checked out what's going on over here. Oh dear, oh dear, oh what have you done? How is it that was no Shabanak, that was a girl, a living girl? Get lost and never set foot here again. But in the fire she is not to burn, for she is made of clay. Wrong, all wrong. Harden she must, and fall apart. What have you done, you demons? So, they just burned this girl because they thought it was a demon or something, but turns out she was just a girl and they burned her. Right, there are bullets, revolver ammo. And what do you get? Oh, he got a revolver. A six round semi automatic revolver. Right, it's loaded. And we got six shots for the revolver, so so just enough for the magazine of the revolver. I don't know. It's probably not called magazine, but <coughs> you know what I mean I guess. And we are completely walking in the wrong direction. Is there a band called something in the direction? One direction, right? wrong direction. So we are now at the right mansion where the head of the Sab Saburov family, one of the three families they had lives here. You? Neither the sun nor death can be looked at without winking. Who said that? The intelligent Julia lives here. She may be my only ally in my attempt to put a 
Fairy Tales and this backroads place to the test of algebra and physics. So Alexander over here told us to talk to this Julia. I did not really understand why. But he also told us to talk to his wife. Because she too had visions about us or something, but I don't know. Oh, right. Looks welcoming in here. Only in things of small value, they usually are bold enough not to trust to appearances. So, there's the next hour, so let's talk to her. This is the wife of Alexander, probably. And Bone Man Eater leaves traces of the kind you've witnessed. It's only a spell, an illusion. They just prefer to see it this way. It makes it easier for them. So the people in this place, the common folk, seems to think of a demon, this clay and bone man-eater that had killed these two guys. But she and her husband, Alexander, the head of the Zaburova family, seem to think that it was the son of our colleague, already forgot his name, that killed him. What was that? Would think, if he wouldn't think, that his son killed him, it was a political crime. But Alexander, I have to get Neither into the, the house. Neither son nor death can be looked at without winking. Right, but I still can't get into the building, can I? I mean, Alexander told us to speak to Julia, but I wanted to get inside the house. It's like a freaking labyrinth or something. All over the place there are these fences and you can't go through most of the passages. So you have to take a certain way to the house. Same I took for music still sounds sending. But at least it's the daytime. Can I go inside now please? No, I still can't. Get into the house, okay, so we're probably not supposed to get into the house. Let's check you, yeah. So, right now we are at Julia's place, but let's look inside in the next episode. I guess I cut it here. For now it's interesting, but I don't know what to think about all of this. Let's just see what's going on in the next episode and talk to Julia. So I hope you enjoyed, if so, check out my other videos on the channel and of course maybe give the video a like or something. 
and I hope I see you soon.